Hi there, my name is Amir Ginsberg. I'm a specialist in internal medicine and chairman of Trillium's Medical Quality of Care Committee. This short video is the second in an educational series about patient safety and is titled Safer Communication Readbacks for Verbal and Telephone Orders. If you want to take a closer look at some of the information in the accompanying slides, please pause this video at any time. When an adverse event causes the death of a patient, we call this a sentinel event or a critical incident. The top root causes for sentinel events are listed here. You can see that when things go wrong in healthcare, a communication failure is identified as the root cause 70% of the time. So there's been a lot of effort over the last 10 years to enhance the safety of communication within our industry. In the last year, we have rolled out a protocol that requires a readback and confirmation prior to enacting verbal or telephone orders. The rest of this video will focus on this project. Verbal and telephone orders are inherently prone to error as compared to written ones. That's because what the person receiving the order hears is affected by accents, poor pronunciation, sound-alike drug names, background noise, and disruptions. Teen numbers often get mixed up. When I order 15 milligrams of morphine orally, did you hear 15 or 50? In acute care hospital settings, these orders are often given in haste. They are particularly error prone during high stress or emergency situations. And they often rely on memory rather than having the orders transcribed immediately. Here's a real world example. What you see here is a set of telephone orders that were given by a physician to a nurse. Unfortunately, the orders are living on a paper towel rather than in the patient's chart. And I think we've all seen orders on the back of someone's hand, on a lab coat, napkin, or on some scrap paper. Here's a nice poster from a US hospital. It says, verbal orders are unsafe unless you write it down, read it back, and get confirmation. This is the foundation of our readback protocol for verbal and telephone orders. Healthcare is not unique in its use of readbacks for high-risk communications. Pilots and air traffic controllers perform readbacks for all clearances. I guess they think it's important for a pilot and an air traffic controller to confirm with each other that, say, an order to land on runway 13 was heard correctly. Imagine the consequences if the plane landed instead on runway 30 because a readback was not done. The fast food industry has moved beyond readbacks to visual confirmation of food orders. Here's a picture of a typical drive through The fast food industry is using readbacks, shouldn't we, in healthcare? In 2001, readbacks became a required practice in the United States. Six years later, compliance was greater than 90% in all but four states. Accreditation Canada has a similar required organizational practice, which is outlined on this slide. So do readbacks actually work in healthcare? Here are some recent industry examples using readbacks. A potentially fatal Tylenol order and a potentially fatal morphine order were both caught using readbacks and immediately corrected. And it only took 10 seconds in each example to do the readback procedure and detect the error. We know how important and effective readbacks are, so that's why it's a standard safe practice at Trillium.